Hi, I'm Jay Adelson. Welcome to Ask Jay. This is a show where we try and answer your questions about how to start your business and things related to that whole world. Um, I uh, certainly want to answer uh, anything about that process and share with you things that I didn't have shared with me when I was getting started. So let's do it. I'm Jay Adelson and I'm the founder and chairman of Revision 3. I've built a number of companies. I've been hired as a CEO and I've even been fired as one. For example, Equinix is a company I took public in 2000 and now has a market cap of over $4 billion. In 2008, I was incredibly honored to have been selected as one of Time Magazine's most influential people in the world. My goal is to pass on some of this knowledge to you, the budding entrepreneurs, and hopefully leave you with some words of wisdom. This episode of Ask Jay is brought to you by GoDaddy. Today's question comes from Rishi from San Francisco who asks, what goes into a term sheet, and how do I know if it's done right? Well, Rishi, you know, a term sheet, just to be specific, is an agreement between you and an investor. A series of terms that um, you think matter. You know, uh, typically the most important terms on a term sheet have to do with what the value of the business is, how much money you're getting, and what percentage, obviously, that translates to uh, for, that, for that money. Um, but there's lots of other things that go into term sheets. Early term sheets, um, folks uh, who are raising seed capital or angel capital, uh, I personally like them to be really simple. Um, not a lot of bells and whistles, not a lot of rules, not a lot of you know um, caveats that basically just suggest uh, how much money they're getting for this um, and the rights associated with the stock. Um, you know, there's a there's a great um, set of examples available. I think Fenwick and West offer it online that Andreessen Horowitz put together. They call it the Series Seed Term Sheets. And these are a great download. You can find them online, I think on Fenwick's site, and uh, download those as a good model. Um, now, uh, there's another type of early investment uh, um, relationship you can have. It's called a convertible note. I tend to shy away from the convertible note. Many entrepreneurs like it because you're not having to actually uh, give away a piece of your company yet. At that stage, you wait till the next round and then that investment converts to stock at a, theory, in theory, a discount at that next round. I just think it's nice and simple and clean to go ahead, give a piece of your company away for your seed capital, and so that term sheet would reflect that. Now, um, later on, when you're doing A rounds and B rounds, term sheets include things like who's going to be on the board, how many board seats there are. Um, they include things like provisions of if you're CEO or not, and what happens uh, in the event that they don't want you to be uh, at a later date. You know, those kinds of things go into a term sheet. Term sheets can be really short or really long. Um, one thing is really important to point out is that a term sheet is, is non-binding typically. So what happens is you get this, this uh, you know, it's a piece of paper, it's signed, but really it's not official until the whole documents, sort of like buying a house, the whole documents are done later. So you'll get this piece of paper, um, somebody telling you it over the phone doesn't really count as a term sheet. So you get this piece of paper and then later that translates to a much bigger uh, and more definitive set of terms. I will tell you one other thing about term sheets is that uh, they're sort of your currency. So once you have one from an investor, at that point, you now are in a position to compare what one investor might give you and the terms, favorable or not, to another investor. And you know, you f it's really a, a feeling of confidence. You have this piece of paper. So now when you go to the next investor and you tell them you already have a term sheet, that puts you in a much better position and they're going to obviously uh, be more interested because somebody else obviously has done their due diligence to figure out that you're worth investing in. I'll give you some tips and tricks in a second on exactly how to structure your term sheet or some of the best ways to go about that. But first I want to thank our sponsor. Get reliable and secure web hosting without the long-term contract with GoDaddy. Hosting plans are bigger and better than ever with 99.99% .99 uptime 
free 24 by 7 support and no annual commitment. And for those of you who are on the go, you can download GoDaddy's free iPhone, Android, or BlackBerry app to order right from your phone or manage your current domains. Make sure to use the code ASKJ2 for $5 off any order of $30 or more. All right, so your homework assignment, in order to make sure your term sheet is absolutely the right one, is to go get a corporate attorney as soon as possible. All right, I talk to all sorts of entrepreneurs who have really screwed themselves because they've read some blog with some downloadable thing and said that's enough. The truth be told, unless you have an attorney, a qualified attorney, it doesn't have to be a super expensive guy, but you know what, I think it's worth every penny to spend as much as 400 bucks an hour on an attorney who really knows their stuff and has done this thousands and thousands of times to look over those terms and help you negotiate them. Not just the final document, but during the process, they can help you negotiate. Just imagine how many deals a corporate attorney in Silicon Valley, for example, has negotiated. That is hugely helpful. So go get a corporate attorney, sign that retainer, and begin uh, uh, working with them to prepare for this term sheet negotiation as soon as possible. Okay, that's it for now. Um, please keep your questions coming to askj at revision3.com. We absolutely need more questions, so, so please, you know, send them along. Um, don't be afraid to ask anything. There's no such thing as a stupid question. And remember, there's nothing to lose here. Find that screw that's loose and loosen a little bit more. Uh, until next time.